<sighs> Hello, everybody. How is everybody doing? Tonight's date is July 29th, 2019. Here to do another movie collection video. It's been a little over six months since I did the last one. Um, what was it? February 1st was the last one, so... You know, since graduation and everything, I've had some free time where I was able to pick up some movies and stuff, and a couple of them were gifts and everything, and 2019 has just been one hell of an eventful, weird, crazy year so far, so I'm happy I finally got an opportunity to just sit down and talk to you lovely people about some movies that I got. Since I'm really not as much of a collector anymore as I once was, that's why there's only like one or two of these a year <laughs> that I do. But, you know, we'll see how it goes. You know, I got some good stuff to talk about. Now, these first two are Blu-rays that I got from Target. And the reason I got these was because I was at Second City and I participated in a corporate show there where I was awarded a $50 Target gift card. And aside from some other miscellaneous things, I also picked up these two. First one is First Man with Ryan Gosling. You know, a movie that I heard nothing but good reviews of. I've heard it's pretty intense. And, you know, the moon landing, all that stuff. I think that's pretty interesting. And I got this. And, you know, it's not my go-to kind of a movie. It's a very long movie. It's a very... It's a drama. You know, there's definitely some intense space scenes in there, no doubt about it. And they're cool when they happen. It's all done really well. The cast does really well. It's a, as I said though, it's a bit long. It's a bit too much of a slow burn for my personal taste. Sometimes I can dig movies like that, but uh, this one it's really well made. I can imagine seeing this in the theater. And so there's a lot of moments in this where I, I can just imagine. I, I'm not sure if this was released in 3D or not. Probably was. Seeing this in the theater, it, it would have been amazing. But you know, watching it here on TV on this Blu-ray, you know, it, you know, it's fine for what it is. You know, it's really well done. Just for me personally, it's a little long, a little slow moving, but overall it was really well made. And then we have Mission Impossible Fallout, which I love my big, stupid, crazy action movies, and that's essentially what this was. You know, Tom Cruise doing all of his own stunts. I remember seeing a bunch of talk shows Tom Cruise was on going over that scene where he shattered his ankle jumping across the rooftops in this. It's a fun movie, you know. I, I don't own any of the other Mission Impossible movies. I, I haven't even really seen them. I, I figured just by watching this I could pick up on it. I was I was stuck between this one and that, uh, oh, fuck, what was it called? That Dick Cheney movie, that Vice, is that what it was called? I was stuck between Vice and this, and I ultimately went with this just because I love my action. There's some stuff, like there's some helicopter scenes towards the end of this movie that are insane, you know. Tom Cruise, you know, the, the, with the power of Scientology, he's, he's a pretty crazy guy in all these movies, but this one was fun to watch, and once again, it is a long movie, it's 147 minutes long, but this one, it, it goes by, because there's always so much happening, and, you know, the ending on the cliff is really well done, and so, for action movie fans, you know, check it out, it, it's a cool, it's a cool time, there's really nothing to dislike about it. All right, now getting in with uh, DVDs, all these that I got used and stuff. First one we have here is Hard Target with Van Damme. I'm a really huge fan of the most dangerous game and all the movies that kind of adapted from it. My favorite is Surviving the Game with uh, Ice-T and Rudger Hauer. That's a great. I love Surviving the Game. Surviving the Game is one of my favorite thrillers. And this is a more action version of that story with Jean-Claude Van Damme. And uh, Wilford Brimley, Lance Henriksen. Wilford Brimley is one of my favorite parts of this movie. He's a he's a riot to watch in this. It, this is a action-packed, great movie. I got this used, so it's good to know that the Kims took good good care of this before I got it. So yeah, because surviving the game to me is more of a thriller. I do love that movie. It's one of my favorite thrillers, but this is more of an action version of that story, and it works really well. Wilford Brimley is a blast to watch. He shoots the bow and arrow through the crack in the wall and hits the roof. It's awesome. And the entire finale with all those abandoned, like, carnival rides and mascots and stuff, it, it's so surreal, but it's so cool at the same time. And Van Damme does really good action, and it's all really good. Lance Henriksen is one hell of a... Well, he always is. He's Lance Henriksen, you know, it's good. 
So yeah, this was a great, very fun action movie. I especially love Wilford Brimley, and just just because he's kind of goofy, like he's I don't I don't want to say comic relief, but he's definitely kind of an oddball character compared to the rest of the stuff that's happening in this. And you know, just like when he comes in on horseback, it's just a joy to watch. So Hard Target was a great time. This is a lesser known one, and uh, I was kind of going out on a whim on this one just because I like the plot. It sounded cool. I heard a couple people say good things about it. And I'm very glad I got it. It's Livewire with Pierce Brosnan. It's basically a movie about terrorists that make water so that it's explosive. Explosive water. So their goal is to like assassinate all these corrupt politicians so that when the politicians drink it they blow up essentially. And some of the explosion scenes in this are really intense too, like the scene in the limo, the scene in the courthouse, and there's a couple other scenes in this where, because you, the audience, you know what's going to happen as soon as they drink this more, so watching it unfold, it's kind of a suspenseful, tense movie, and Pierce Brosnan plays a guy that works for the Bomb Squad, and there's a funny, you know, kind of wraparound bookend where he's, he has to help this woman who, her car is her psycho ex-boyfriends keep wiring a bomb under the driver's seat of her car. You know, fun humor. This movie does have a fun sense of humor. The third act of this movie is just straight up MacGyver meets Home Alone. Like, you want me to describe the finale of this movie? That's what it is. It's MacGyver meets Home Alone, where they booby-trap the mansion and all that stuff. But I'm not complaining, just because it's so entertaining and so fun to watch. Like, it's slightly hokey, but it, to the point where I was having fun watching it. I was at, like him, so when they flip the light switch, they blow up. Like, you know, fun stuff. He's got the nail gun at the end. It's fun. You know, it's it's an action movie. You don't expect to be emotionally moved by an action movie. And this movie entertains the fuck out of you. And it's fun. Like, the, the scene at the carnival was great. Like, I especially love the way that scene builds up. You know, great cast. Pierce Brosnan, Ron Silver is the this politician that's sleeping with Pierce Brosnan's girl in the movie, and so there's like some miscellaneous relationship drama there. It's it's wacky, but it's fun. I really enjoyed that movie, and I would recommend it. Now this was an '80s movie. I some I've always I loved the soundtrack. I had always read about it. I would always knew of the movie, but I never owned it or watched it until now, and that is. Summer School. Most of you probably already know this, so I won't dwell on it, but Summer School was a fantastic movie. I really loved watching Mark Harmon, Kirstie Alley, Dean Cameron. Dean Cameron's fun and everything he's in, whether it be this or Bad Dreams or Men at Work. Isn't that the one where he played the pizza boy? Because that's a fun one. Young Courtney Thorne Smith. And Kelly Jo Minter, the one who needs to learn how to drive. Just a fun, fun movie. It makes, it makes me, now that I graduated in May, this movie makes me miss school. Because there were a couple semesters uh, of school where I did take summer classes just to get a, a boost and stuff. And they were, all, they were all fun. Like, I remember summer of 2014, I took an economics class with James Musser, a guy that only wore Hawaiian shirts and would just talk shit about his kids nonstop and his wife. That was a that was one hell of a class, and I loved it. So this movie just brought back some great memories, and it's just a fun movie. It's got a great soundtrack, great gags, like all the gory makeup stuff that Dean Cameron's into, and the, the French foreign exchange student that they love. I, I'm preaching to the choir. You guys already know summer school. I was late to the party on it, though, so great movie. It almost reminds me of that TV movie that's really low budget called Crash Course. That was about a summer driver's ed. Program. That was another 80s movie. And another 80s movie is Three O'Clock High. I love this one. This one was awesome. I had heard about this one. I knew the plot for a while. You know, kid gets challenged to a fight by the bully, and it's him trying to go the whole school day trying to avoid the fight. And just a comedy of errors and everything. Just all the shenanigans and shit that happens to him along the way. This one is great. And I got this too because Richard Tyson plays the bully and in January 
like December, Jan no, January of this year, I got the complete series of Hardball, which is an 80s cop show with uh, Richard Tyson and John Ashton, and I love that show. So I wanted to see more of Richard Tyson, so I got this finally, and I'm very glad. He's playing a very different character here. He's a fucking asshole in this movie. But it's great. Like, the fight scenes at the end, miscellaneous, you know, cast full of people. Like, I, Mitch Pileggi showed up at one point as a school security guard. Yeah, that's right. Buddy Ravel, that was the name. Working in the school store. This is just a blast of an 80s movie. And it is suspenseful, too. Like, it's a comedy, but at the same time, like, you're really feeling for the character. Like, oh, shit, like, how's he going to go about this? You know, like, what's going to happen? So... I highly, 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 highly recommend Three O'Clock High. That was a fun, fun, fun movie. Sorry if I'm not being too descriptive here, but you know, like, what can I say? Like, it, I love the plot. You know, it's a, just a joy to watch, and it's a joy to see Richard Tyson eventually get his comeuppance in there. Even though in Hardball, Richard Tyson plays like the most likable, badass, like ladies' man kind of cop character in that show where you root for him in every episode and in there you want to see him get the shit kicked out of him. I still need to get Kindergarten Cop too. He's a bad guy in that too. But So 3 O'Clock High. If you love your 80's high school fixes, Summer School and 3 O'Clock High. 3 O'Clock High is a very different, it's not a John Hughesy type movie. You know, it's got like kind of a tenseness to it and it's, you know, it's a good, it's a good thing. Now this set, on the other hand, is a little bit of a different story. Uh, I got this for two dollars, and it's a set of four movies. And uh, those four movies are the first four in the Leprechaun series. Starring Warwick Davis, who I really like. I mean, you watch interviews and everything, he seems like such a cool, funny, down-to-earth guy. Like, Warwick Davis is just the kind of guy I just like listening to him talk and tell stories. And these movies <laughs> are certainly an experience. As far as these four goes, the first one, Leprechaun, is the only one I can consciously recommend as a somewhat decent movie. Because Leprechaun, you could tell they were making a goosebumpy, tongue-in-cheek, self-aware, spoofy, you know, kids kind of horror movie. And it's very apparent. Like, the Leprechaun is shining all the shoes and the the rainbow and his hand coming out of the phone like Freddy Krueger and just the carrot like Ozzy. It's a total goosebump. You could tell that was geared towards like teens and stuff. And for that I had stupid fun with it. I was laughing at it like the scene where he jumps on the guy with the pogo stick and going through the fence and his silhouettes in the fence or as I said they distract him by having him shine all the shoes. Like I'm, I love stupid movies so that stuff kind of it tickled my fancy. I'm not going to say it's a good movie, but it, it, it tickled my fancy. And, I mean, you know, Warwick Davis, I want me gold! <laughs> like, but Leprechaun 2, in my opinion, is the worst out of these four. It's just... It's just stupid. There's nothing really interesting. Leprechaun 2 is my least favorite. Leprechaun 3 was in Las Vegas, and once again, it's got a good cat. You know, Caroline Williams is in there. There's a couple decent death scenes... Ultimately, Leprechaun 3 is nothing to run home about. Leprechaun 4 in space is so shitty and so bad that it, in my opinion, becomes worthwhile to watch it. You watch Leprechaun 4 in space and you will be just blown away. Dr. Mittenhand or the, the death when he throws the tray at the guy's face or when he grows big at the end. It, like... He gets resurrected by a guy pissing on him. And then he goes into the guy's dick and it's a spoof of alien. Like, it's... Leprechaun 4 in space is totally worth it because of how god-awful stupid it is. As far as decency goes, the first one is the only one I can recommend as a decent movie because it knows what it is. It's a very goosebumpsy type movie and that's what they were trying to do. Uh, two and three, yeah. and and four is just so bad that it's worth it. And there's very few movies I can say that about. But that, for a rewatch, no, like I'm no way in hell I'm probably gonna watch Leprechaun four again, just leisurely by myself. But it's it's worth a watch just so you can have your mind blown at least once. It'll take your brain to space and back if you if you watch it. 
back to better movies, we have a Dolph Lundgren, kind of a sci-fi, horror, thriller, action movie, buddy cop movie called Dark Angel, which was primarily released under the title I Come in Peace, which is a much better title because that's the only line of dialogue our villain has in this movie. He says it like 50 times. Uh, but it's a fun movie. You know, Dolph Lundgren's always... I like Dolph Lundgren. He's got a lot of movies I like. This is a very unpopular opinion, but I love the movie Detention because of how stupid it is. Like, I'm talking about Leprechaun being fun for being stupid. Dolph Lundgren did a movie called Detention that I love because it's so stupid. Like, there's a scene where a kid in a wheelchair outruns a guy on a motorcycle. See, that's got my name written all over it. I love stupid shit like that. But Dark Angel's a legitimately good movie. It is a little far, you know, it, it's a more of a far-fetched movie, you know, with the aliens coming down and the, you know, the eye come in peace. But it's handled really well. I love the POV shots whenever he shoots that magnetic disc out of his hand and you see it zooming around and the, the camera's following it. That Those are cool shots. There's, it almost feels like there's two different movies he's going on because Dolph Lundgren is fighting these aliens. There's a good alien, there's a bad alien. But then there's like this gang called the White Boys, which is like this white collar corrupt business thing that really has nothing to do with the rest of it. So that was a little weird. I personally probably would have taken them out of the movie and just focused it fully on the aliens and the sci-fi action stuff. But thankfully the, the White Boys, their screen time is really small in comparison to the aliens and all the action that we get. So that, you know, it equals out. It's got a great soundtrack. Touch me tonight. And, and Dolph Lundgren does good. He, I won't spoil it, but at the very end of this movie, he utters what is quite possibly the greatest one-liner of all time. So, if you're a Dolph Lundgren fan, action, sci-fi, horror, buddy cop, you'll dig that one. It's, it's, it covers a little bit of every ground for 1990, but that's, that's what kind of adds to its appeal. You know? So that's a good one. I recommend Dark Angel, a.k.a. I Come in Peace. And now this one was amazing too. This is a 1980 movie. It's the first ever movie of Michael J. Fox. You also got David Naughton, Eddie Deason, Stephen First, and just a bunch of people in this one. It's Midnight Madness. I've always been a huge fan of the 80s treasure, not even 80s, like just the treasure hunt. So in the 60s you had It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, which is one of my all-time favorite movies. You had Rat Race in 2001, which I love. Million Dollar Mystery in the 80s, which also had Eddie Deason in it, which is not that good. And a Scavenger Hunt in the 70s, which is pretty good. And it's early Arnold Schwarzenegger appearance. This one is kind of like that. This is like a Scavenger Hunt game type movie where you have these four teams, like the, the white team, the blue team, the red team, and the yellow team, and they have to go do all these missions, and it's like a scavenger hunt by this guy Leon, who's this guy with this big fro. And the, I love this movie. I had never seen it before, so watching Stephen First just play an absolute asshole, or like these, and like these jock football goons that... They go to the Paps Blue Ribbon facility and the guy gets drunk by swimming around in the vat full of beer. And It's a wild movie and it's crazy. Pee Wee Herman, there's a lot of little cameos in this, but it's a, it's a very fast-paced movie. This movie moves along at a lightning fast pace. Like Once it gets going, it's going. And you're enjoying every character, whether you're rooting for them or you're hating them. I myself always love Eddie Deason. He's fun and everything, especially in this, like some of his face. I mean, Eddie Deason, that's pretty self-explanatory. And it's got a great song, too, like this super late 70s, early 80s disco song, like Midnight Madness. So that was a great, I, that's an awesome one. I, for fans of comedy and everything, that's a hilarious movie. You got, you got to check that one out. Now, these next three were all gifts from my friend Ryan. Um, this one was just a movie he wanted my thoughts on movie called Bats with Lou Diamond Phillips, which I didn't know until after I watched this. I guess this movie gets shit on upon shit on upon shit on because this has like a 3 out of 10 on IMDb and like every review I read trashes this. And I, I'm sitting there like, what the fuck, why? I thought this was a pretty good movie. It's like a you know, monster movie about killer bird, bird 
bats. So, and, and it does it well. It's not boring. It moves along. For the most part, the special effects are really good. Lou Diamond Phillips is a great lead. They don't waste it on any, like, love interest, like, subplot bullshit. Like, this movie is right to the point. Like, right from the intro, you got killer bats and we gotta stop them. And that's the, when they barricade themselves in the school at the end. That's great stuff. The doctor character, you love to hate him. There's even a scene in this that's chilling where they hint that a baby is murdered. Because you see a baby sleeping in a crib and the mutant bat crawling up in the crib and it cuts away so you don't even see what happened after this. So it's like, that's some chilling stuff. And ultimately, I thought this was a great horror movie. Well, I don't know if I'd say great, but you know, it's a above average horror movie. And a 3 out of 10? No. Just, no. This movie is not that bad. Lou Diamond Phillips does great. Everyone that's with Lou Diamond Phillips does great. Um, the, for the most part, the special effects and the gore. There's a couple scenes where the bats are attacking, where it's really quick cut and edity and stuff. Like, okay, I can maybe do without some of that. But for the most part, like a 3 out of 10 horror movie, no. If you're just looking for a fun, drive-in style horror creature feature movie, I recommend it. I thought this movie was fine. Like, would you rather watch this, or would you rather watch Leprechaun 3, The Leprechaun in Vegas? <laughs> so, well, granted, they're two very different movies. I don't know how you, well you can compare that. Then this weekend is actually Flashback Weekend, the horror convention I go to every year in Chicago. And one of the guests is Alan Kaiser, because he was in the Night of the Creeps, and they're having a big Night of the Creeps reunion. And Orion had doubles of these DVDs, so he just sent them to me. Um, so, hey, thank you. And it's a sitcom from the 80s that Alan Kaiser was in, for most of it. It's Mama's Family, Vicki Lawrence. Now, Alan Kaiser became a main character starting in the third season because the show ran for two seasons. It got canceled, but then they brought it back and they redid some of the cast and everything, including Alan Kaiser as Bubba, the grandson. So I wanted to, before I met him at the convention this weekend, I wanted to familiarize myself. And thankfully, Ryan just had doubles of season one and season three, so he sent them both to me. And I gotta tell you guys, this is a really fun show. It, it's a character that started off on the Carol Burnett show and, you know, it was spun off into its own show. And, like, season one, you have some great episodes. Like, season one, you have the episode where they go on Family Feud with Richard Dawson, and it's filmed like an actual Family Feud episode. That one had me cracking up. That one's funny. You have uh, another good one on here where they... Uh, Mama had to get a job, so she gets a job at a talent agency, and she's just yelling at everyone. It's great. So, season one's great. And then season three, where they kind of redid it and revamped it with the new cast, I like even better. Uh, this one's great. This one has, like, yeah, like uh, Bubba, Alan Kaiser, steals a stop sign, and throughout the whole episode, you just hear cars keep crashing outside. Or, uh, Mama gets involved in an arm wrestling tournament. There was one episode on here. There's an episode on here where it involves a dead cat and they lose the body of a dead cat. Uh, over there, I got the urn. Unfortunately, earlier this year in April, I had to have my 14-year-old cat put down unexpectedly, so that episode was a little weird to watch, but believe it or not, it still got laughs out of me, so, you know, they, they did it well. And I oh, and there's a line of dialogue I loved in the arm wrestling episode where they were like, uh, you're not grandma, you're Grambo! Like, trying to pump her up for the arm wrestling turn, and they call her Grambo. I just thought that was fucking funny. Grambo. And, uh, and the episode where her and Bubba have to work together at the burger restaurant, so... Fun show. I, if, if, you're a, if you're a sitcom kind of person, it's definitely not for everybody, but if you're a sitcom kind of person, definitely a fun series to watch. I've been going through both of these DVD seasons a lot, and there's a lot of fun stuff. I... I've never watched Mama's Family before, but especially the Family Feud episode in season one. That one. The fifth season of King of the Hill. King of the Hill is probably my favorite cartoon. You know, it's up there with vintage, like seasons one through twelve of The Simpsons, and then King of the Hill. King of the Hill is one of my all-time favorite. I love King of the Hill. It's 
by far the most underrated cartoon that's ever been out there. And season five was great. Like, you had the one episode where Bill decorated his house to be like Santa's village for the holidays, but he gets obsessed with it, and he keeps it Christmas all year round, and Bobby, Connie, and Joseph get wasted in the jumpy. Lot, lots of fun stuff. Oh, man. King of the I love King of the Hill. Like, if you're a fan of, like, Simpsons and Family Guy, even especially the earlier ones, because King of the Hill is practically a real sitcom. Like, this could have been a live-action show. It's fully realistic. There's really nothing outlandish about King of the Hill, but it's anime, and that's why I think it works so well. Like, I love King of the Hill. It's, it's my favorite cartoon. And it's up there. It's between early Simpsons, like seasons 1 through 12 and King of the Hill, but... I love King of the Hill. I, 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 my favorite season, I still think, is three. But I'm going to get all of them because there's really not a bad season. Because Simpsons, you know, after season 16, like, they just... <sighs> Simpsons has been great years. Family Guy, <sighs> I never liked American Dad. I never liked Bob's Burgers. And I know I'm going to get a lot of hate from people on that, but I'm sorry. Old Bob's Burgers, new Bob's Burgers... I think it fucking sucks. It's a show for hipsters, and unfortunately that's not me. So, good luck with Bob's Burgers. I think that show fucking sucks, but I'm not here to piss anybody off. It's my opinion. It's just not my kind of show. This is my kind of show. I love King of the Hill. I love the characters. So, King of the Hill Season 5. I'm on track to get the whole series. This was cheap. This was only a couple bucks, so I figured why not pick it up. The Angry Video Game Nerd, Volume 4. And I do like the Angry Video Game. I'm not much of a gamer. I really don't play video games. I don't know anything about video games. That's not really my area. But these are just so entertaining and fun. And this one especially has some great episodes. You got Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. You got the Atari Jaguar. The only one I didn't like on here was the Odyssey, where he was like, he cloned himself from a piece of shit, and he's playing the Odyssey. And the whole episode, it's just him going... Just making fart noise. That one was fucking stupid. The Odyssey episode was fucking stupid. I don't like that one. But everything else, one of the all-time best episodes, Plumbers Don't Wear Ties, is on this on this DVD. And that is one of the funny... Because the game is so random and non-sequitur and just stupid and random for the sake of being stupid and random, that seeing James play it was fantastic. That That... That episode alone makes this whole set worthwhile. Wayne's World, the Winter Games one, Little Red Hood, and there's even like the, the Sega 3, the Virtual Reality Stunt Master on the third disc. That's a funny thing, just to see him and Mike try to set up. So, fun DVD. You know, support them. You know, independent filmmaking and the internet celebrities and stuff, especially somebody as hardworking as James Rolfe, you know, definitely support them, especially for this set, because this set, with the exception of that shitty Odyssey episode, pun semi-intended, this is a great set, with some of his best episodes on here. This is one from my childhood, and uh, I'm trying to pick up more childhood DVDs, like, I think in the last one from... February, I showed DVDs of Thomas the Tank Engine and Arthur, just because I want to have a little childhood section of, like, DVDs and shows that I watched as a kid, and the specific ones that I had as a kid, and so I had to get this, this guy, Dave Hood, was a huge part of my childhood, huge part of my upbringing, and I love him, so, you know, you gotta, you gotta stay true to your roots and have a little piece of that with you, so I bought... His series, Dave Hood, he has a series called Real Wheels, so I got the Truck Adventures DVD that comes with three of his specials, which are There Goes a Fire Truck, There Goes a Garbage Truck, and There Goes a Truck. That's how I used to, it, it's called Real Wheels, I used to just call it the There Goes, which that's what most people call it, because all of them start with There Goes a insert vehicle here. And I love Dave Hood and his, you know, co-host Becky like, they, they play such hyper-characters of themselves, but it's it's fun to watch. They've got blooper reels on here, which obviously, as a kid, I had all these on VHS, so you would never see the blooper reels. So this was a huge part of my childhood. Dave Hood was exceptionally entertaining, and I'm not sure what he's up to now. 
I hope he's doing well. And if Dave Hood somehow finds this, you were a huge part of my childhood, and just thank you. Thank you so much. And I was even watching this back now. Like, and it still gets chuckles out of me, because it's not... That's the problem with kids shows nowadays. Everything is so overly fluffy and, you know, overly happy and teaching just bare minimum, you know, life lessons of being happy, being nice. But, like, this is shit that's real and actually teaches you, like, you know, fire trucks, trucks, guard, like, but the, his series actually teaches you real world applications and, like, adult level things, you know, and... You know, same thing with Old Arthur. Like, Old Arthur was one of the balls, like the episode where the parrot, DW's parakeet Spanky died, or Old Thomas the Tank Engine, where they're crashing and blowing shit up in every episode. And that's why the world continues to grow gradually shittier, because our youth is being raised on shittier, unballsy, like, overly safe, overly fluffy shows. And I'm really glad I was not raised on any of that bullshit. I was raised on real stuff like this. So, Dave Hood, I owe a lot to you. I, I wish you the... Whatever you're doing now, I hope you're successful. I hope you're doing well at it. And I'm going to continue buying these two. Like, I want to seriously collect all of his stuff on DVD. And it's good because each one comes with three of... You know, you have all the individual VHSs. And this one's got it all there. So, there you go. And these are all good, too. Fire Truck was the first one I ever owned, and There Goes a Truck was the second one I ever owned, where him and Becky were in the were in the semi. So. And the last one, this is a little bit of a cheat. You could see uh, video footage of this if you go on my YouTube channel. I cut together a compilation of all the scenes I acted in. It was when I was at the Second City. We put on our own. We wrote and directed and casted our own sketch show for the Second City ETC stage here in Chicago. And this is the video of my cohorts. We were cohort two. This is a video of our show, called, which was titled Be Comfy, courtesy of Kirsten Kelly, who came up with that name. Uh, just to give a shout out to all my fellow cohort cast members, Blake Nall, Brooke John Dalderis, John Dis, Charlie Ulch, Char uh, yeah, Charlie Ulch, Chris Larson, Jaffe Pollitt, Joe Harrington, Kelsey Schmidt, Kellen Halsey, Ken Pataki, Kylie Sagayan, Kirsten Kelly, Molly Bachmeyer, Sarah DePaulo, and Sean Miller. We spent pretty much five months together at the Second City crafting this show and everything, coming up with all these scenes. I won't talk too much about it. If you go on my channel, you'll see a video I cut together. The thumbnail should be that picture of all the, you know, uh, just of all the sketches we you know, some of them, unfortunately, did not make it into the final show. Kind of a bummer, but, you know, that's how it goes. And You know, we, we had some fun times, so, and now I'm graduated. I got my, from Second City, from Second City, Chicago, I did end up getting my bachelor's degree in comedy writing and my bachelor's of arts, magna cum laude, Comedy, writing, and performance from Second City in conjunction with Columbia College Chicago. So there we go. So this was my big final achievement in academia. And I'm very proud of how it came out. And I'm very proud of everybody. I haven't really seen too many people from my cast, you know, since we did it. But I hope everybody's doing well. And so there we go, ladies and gentlemen. There's my little movie update for July 29th. Uh, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. You know, hope you just like hearing me talk about movies. And we will see you soon for the next adventure, ladies and gentlemen. Ciao.